Welcome back. We're ready to start improving our weapon fire code. Now the first thing I want to point out is let's take a look at our fire button pressed function. So here's fire button pressed. And in fire button pressed, we check to see if the weapon has ammo. If the weapon does have ammo, then we set B fire button pressed to true and we call start fire timer. Now the problem with this is that the B fire button pressed boolean should reflect whether or not we're pressing the fire button, not whether or not we have ammo, not whether or not any other condition is true. This should only be true if we're pressing the fire button and it should not be false if we are pressing the fire button, even if we don't have ammo. Now we can take this and put it right here outside of the if weapon has ammo check. Why? Because this boolean should be true whether we have ammo or not. So this is an important point that we're going to talk about in this video, and that is functions should do exactly what they're supposed to do, and they shouldn't actually do things that they're not supposed to do. For example, the fire button pressed function shouldn't really be checking to see if we have ammo. We shouldn't really even be starting the fire timer. We should just be calling a function called fire weapon and fire weapon should handle those things. Fire weapon should be like pulling a trigger. And if the weapon has no ammo, well, then the weapon won't fire. When you pull the trigger on a gun, then the gun will either fire if it has ammo or it will click and not fire a bullet if there is no weapon ammo. So we're going to work on improving our code so that each function does exactly what it should be doing and it shouldn't be doing anything outside of its own functionality. Now, in order to improve our weapon firing code, we need to understand that code. So let's talk about our weapon firing code for a moment. Now here we have a diagram that represents our fire button pressed function. Here's what the function looks like in code. Now take a look at the diagram on the left and compare it to the code on the right. The first thing we do is we set B fire button pressed to true. And then we have an if check to see if our weapon has ammo. And if that is true, if we do have ammo, we start the fire timer. Okay, so far so good. Now here is the start fire timer function. Here on the right is the C++ code for it. Now, the first thing we do is check the boolean B should fire. And if that's true, we call fire weapon. Now, fire weapon handles all the visual stuff. It creates some smoke. It spawns particles like fire at the barrel of the weapon. It performs a line trace, which then is used to create the beam particles. It plays the sounds and so on. Then we set the boolean B should fire to false. Now, we use this boolean B should fire so that we can't spam the firing function. We can't continue to press our fire button as fast as we possibly can and fire at an arbitrarily rapid rate. This B should fire boolean is set to false for the duration of the timer that we set. So we call set timer and the callback for that timer is auto fire reset. And it isn't until auto fire reset that we set B should fire back to true. So as long as that Boolean is false, then this if check here and start fire timer prevents us from firing the weapon as fast as we would like. Now in auto fire reset, which gets called at the end of the timer, here's the code in C++, we first check to see if the weapon has ammo. If it does, we set B should fire back equal to true so that we can fire the weapon again. And if B fire button pressed is true, in other words, if we're still pressing that button or holding it down, then we start the fire timer again. If it's not true, we don't start the fire timer again, but we could of course lift our finger and then press the button again which would call start fire timer anyway, and the whole process will repeat. So here are the three functions. When fire button is pressed, when we actually press the button, then we check if we have ammo and then we start fire timer, which of course 
checks if we should fire, and then fires the weapon, sets the boolean to false, and starts the timer. Now during this time that we're waiting, B should fire as false, and at the end of the time, auto fire reset gets called. And of course, we check to see if we have ammo, we set B should fire back to true, we check to see if we're still holding the fire button, in which case we go ahead and call start fire timer again. So we have this loop that will happen as long as we're holding the button down and we still have ammo. So this is all fine and good, but what about if we want to introduce reloading into this whole mechanism? We already have a Boolean B should fire, which if it's false, we can't fire the weapon, but what are we gonna do about reloading? Are we gonna have a Boolean called B should reload? Because we shouldn't be able to reload if we're in the middle of firing, for example. If we're holding the fire button down and we're firing bullets, well, we should have to release that button in order to start reloading the weapon. And so when we start having a whole bunch of different Booleans like this, it gets out of hand and it gets complicated. And so in order to introduce something like reloading, we're gonna to have to simplify this and make our code a lot more orderly. So here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna create an enum called eCombatState, and we're gonna store this on the character class. Now, we'll create three different states, and of course we can add more later if we need them, but we're gonna have these three. They're called unoccupied, fire timer in progress, and reloading. Now, unoccupied is when our hands are empty and they're free to do anything like fire the weapon or reload the weapon. Now, as soon as we fire the weapon and start that fire timer, then our combat state will be in the fire timer in progress state. And while the fire timer is in progress, we shouldn't be able to reload. And so that should keep us from being able to do things we shouldn't while the fire timer is in progress. Now, as soon as we reload, our combat state will switch to the reloading state, in which case we shouldn't be able to fire the weapon because we're reloading. In other words, we should only be able to enter into the firing state or the reloading state if we're unoccupied. So instead of using a bunch of Booleans, we're gonna use a single enum for our combat state. And this will allow us to get rid of B should fire. So this will help us simplify things a bit. Now we're also going to restructure our functions so that each function only does what it should do and it doesn't do anything outside of its job. Let's take a look at fire button pressed for example. In fire button pressed, we should only handle setting the boolean B fire button pressed to true and then try to fire the weapon. Firing the weapon should be like pulling the trigger on a gun. If it doesn't have ammo in it, fire weapon should handle that. So here's what fire weapon should look like. As soon as we fire the weapon, we should check our combat state. And if we're not unoccupied, we should return. We should not do anything else. So we'll make an if check to see if our combat state is not in the unoccupied state. If we're not unoccupied, we're either already firing the weapon or we're reloading. So we shouldn't be firing the weapon. So we'll return early. Next, in fire weapon, we should check to see if we have ammo. If we do have ammo, then we can handle all the visual stuff like the sparks, the sound, the line trace, the smoke beam. And fire weapon should be the one to call start fire timer, not the other way around. So once we call start fire timer, our start fire timer function should only do a couple things. For one, it could set our combat state into the fire timer in progress state and then we can actually get our world timer manager and call set timer. That's it. We set our state into fire timer in progress and set the timer in motion. Now, at the end of that timer, our callback for the timer is auto fire reset. Auto fire reset can simply set our combat state back to unoccupied. And then of course, as soon as we finished firing a round, we should check to see if we're empty because if we don't have ammo, then we should try to reload the weapon. So we haven't created our reload weapon function yet. We'll create that soon, but if we just finished firing and our gun is empty, we should try to reload. Now let's say we do have ammo. Well, auto fire reset 
should check to see if our fire button is still pressed, in which case we can try to fire the weapon again. So auto fire reset will handle our combat state, it'll set us back to unoccupied, and then depending on whether or not the gun has ammo in it, we'll try to reload it or we'll check to see if we should fire it based on whether the fire button is pressed or not. Then reload weapon and fire weapon should check to see if we're unoccupied and then perform their actions accordingly. So here is the new design. Whenever we press the fire button, fire button pressed gets called and B fire button pressed is set to true. And then we simply try to fire the weapon by calling fire weapon. Now fire weapon will first check to see if we're unoccupied. If we're not, then we don't need to do anything at this point because our combat state will be either in the reload state or the fire timer and progress state, in which case we can't fire the weapon. Now, if we are unoccupied, then we check to see if we have ammo. Fire weapon should only display the visuals if there's ammo in the weapon. Now, if there is ammo, we'll display the visuals, the sparks, the sound, the line trace, the beam, all that good stuff, and then call start fire timer. Now start fire timer will simply set our combat state to fire timer and progress and then actually start the timer. So at this point, we're no longer unoccupied, which means we can't reload and we can't fire the weapon. Now at the end of this time period, auto fire reset will set us back to unoccupied and then check to see if the gun has ammo. If it doesn't have ammo, it'll try to reload. If it does have ammo, then it'll check to see if we should fire it. And the only reason we should is if the fire button is still pressed. If the fire button is pressed, we go back to fire weapon and fire weapon will check to see if we're unoccupied, which if we've reached auto fire reset, that means the timer has completed and auto fire reset will set us back to unoccupied so we can fire the weapon again. So this is something that will happen in software development. When you're first starting and trying to get features implemented, you write whatever code works and you add features on top of that. But soon you'll realize you have to restructure if you want to keep adding functionality without it getting out of hand with its complexity. So we'll see you in the next video when we start to restructure this code.